I was 17 when Charlotte was born. My name is Colin Fisher. I'm your typical teenage lad, fresh out of sixth form school with a handful of qualifications and the choice of secondary colleges to go to. I had a small circle of close friends, but my best friend was Robert Garrett. We had been born on the same day and had gone to the same schools and had even excelled at the same subjects. Our plan was to go to the same college and then find a flat to share until we got girlfriends. We even looked alike with our slim frames and long hair though his was a scruffy blonde and mine was almost auburn. We had often been mistaken in our youth for twins. There was one major exception. I'm a cross-dresser. I never imagined that he had the same unusual hobby. I learned about Bobby on the day that Charlotte was born. I had gone round to Robert's house one Saturday in late August. Summer was still in full swing, the days were long and heady and blossom filled the air. We had been planning to go out for a bike ride in the park, but the heavens opened as soon as I got there in a summer storm. Soon the rain was pelting the roads and pavements with ferocious strength, so we decided to forego the bikes and instead we sat in his parents' living room playing on his Xbox. Once I got there, I did not want to go out either, Robert's elder sister was also in. Maria was perfect. She had just turned 19 and was wise beyond her years. She was tall and slim, with jet black hair that she wore short, but in a feminine style. Today she was wearing a tight red top that emphasized her breasts and a pair of tight denim jeans. The girl had great taste in clothes. It was her eyes that did it for me though. They were a soft grayish blue that seemed to hold me with their gaze. Also, Maria was different to all our other friends' sisters. Instead of seeing their brothers as loathsome insects to be avoided and feared, Maria and Robert had a very good friendship and were close, very similar to the relationship I had with my sister. Maria was also interested in her brother's friends and though that included me, I doubted that she felt the same affection that I felt for her. I can honestly say that I was in love with Maria. I had known Maria all my life and when I was with her, I merely basked in her presence, just being in the same room with her made me feel safe and secure. I had never said anything about my love for Maria because I felt that, as much as she liked me, my chances of being romantic started at zero and plummeted from there. All that changed on that Saturday. Robert and I were playing Splinter Cell on a two-player game. Robert hooped with delight as he shot me in the head and I went down. Got you. You never saw me coming. Yeah, you got me, I said. Maria leaned forward, her firm breasts straining against her t-shirt. Don't worry Colin, he's been practicing. I think you're better, she said, winking at me as she leaned back. Thanks Maria, I said, feeling a stir in my groin. Robert turned the game off and fumbled through his collection. Fancy a racing game? he asked. Yes. Set one up. I'm going to the loo. I stood up and left the room. Robert's voice trailing after me. Don't fall down the hole. As I walked up the stairs to the toilet, I wondered about Maria. Did she feel the same about me? Did she like me? Did she love me? I doubted it. But I also thought that I would ask her when I got back down. As I mounted the landing I saw the lingerie draped over the banister. I paused. It was just laid there, outside the bathroom. I leaned over the banister and listened intently. I could hear Robert and Maria talking in the living room so I figured I was safe. Then I caught myself thinking, safe for what? Surely I wasn't planning. Before I knew what I had done, I was in the bathroom with the lingerie in my hand and a thought in my head. I couldn't be serious, could I? My breathing became shallow as I separated the items out and looked them over. There was a bra with matching panties, a suspender belt with six garter tabs and a pair of seam stockings, all in black and trimmed with delicate lace. I forgot all thoughts of my bladder as I looked at the items, laid out on the floor. I looked at the door, no lock. Well, that was it I decided, there was no way I could put these clothes on and get away with it. I had decided to put them back when I discovered I was almost naked in the room. I had taken off my t-shirt and jeans and was stood there in just my wife fronts and socks. Oh shit! What the hell was I doing? I decided that as I had come this far, I would go all the way and pulled my wife fronts off with my socks. I picked up the bra. 
It was deliciously exquisite and I hankered to wear it, to feel its constricting tightness around my chest. I wrapped it around my waist and did the hooks at the front. Then, spinning it around, I pulled it up around my chest and slipped the straps over my shoulders. It looked good on my hairless chest. I reached for the suspender belt and wrapped that around my slim waist too, tucking it round once it was done so that it too was the right way round. Then, I reached for the stockings and pulled the left one up my smooth hair-free leg, almost shouting as the material encased my leg. This was fantastic! My penis stood up as I attached the stocking to the suspender belt. I ignored it as much as I could and pulled the right stocking up my leg. As I attached it to the belt, I noticed that the seams were not entirely straight on either leg and started pulling on the stockings to straighten them. I did it carefully so as not to stretch the delicate material or worse, put a run in them. Once they were straight, I looked at my reflection on the floor-length mirror on the door. Only the panties to go now. I pulled them up and my penis softened as the transformation was completed. I pushed it between my legs and pulled the panties up. As I stood there in Maria's underwear, for I was sure it was hers, I felt wonderful and ecstatic. I knew that what I was doing was wrong, and I had learned from experience that it was frowned on. I had been dressing in my sister's clothes for years. Strangely enough she didn't mind and often gave me some of her hand-me-downs for my own wardrobe. My mom tolerated it she bought my female clothes and let me dress in the house on certain nights, particularly if dad was out. My dad wanted nothing to do with it and ignored me if I was dressed. I stood there, relishing this chance to wear something mature and sexy and a thrill coursed through me as I ran my hands over the lingerie. I was wearing stockings. And a suspender belt. How had I not been found out? I decided not to push my luck then, but found that I pushed it a little too far. The door rattled as someone knocked on it. Colin? Are you done in there yet? Maria asked. Without thinking, I pulled my jeans on and buckled them up. I looked for my t-shirt and found it in a heap on the floor. Air, yeah, I'm fine, I said, pulling the t-shirt over my head and smoothing it down. I noticed my underwear on the floor and scooped it up. Colin, can you hurry up? I'm bursting out here. Shit. What the hell was I playing at? I placed the underwear in the washing basket thinking I could retrieve it later. Then I pulled the flush on the toilet. I took several deep breaths and forced my heart to slow down. My reflection peered back at me, flushed and pale. I splashed some water on my face to cool myself down and dried myself on a towel. There, that was better. I took a final deep breath and steadied my breathing. Colin, if you don't hurry up in there, I'm not going to need the toilet. I opened the door and stepped out. Maria almost ran into the toilet, brushing past me as she entered. Thank God, she said and shut the door. I leaned against the wall and wondered how I was going to get out of this, out of her lingerie and back into my own underwear without getting caught. I went back down to the living room where Robert was having a practice on Need for Speed. What do you want? The Subaru or the Ford? My mind was in a complete daze as I sat down. Air, the Subaru, I said. Robert nodded. Good choice. He handed me a controller and the race started. I have always been better at driving simulations than shoot em UPS even stealth ones, but even so, I made a couple of fundamental mistakes and even span out on a very easy curve. Robert won the race easily. Yeah. He shouted, jumping to his feet and doing a quick Michael Jackson routine. I am on fire today. Let's try that again, shall we? I said forgetting my predicament in the heat of competition. Maria came in and sat down on the sofa, watching us play. I had almost forgotten the situation I was in when Maria spoke. Robert, what would you say if I told you that your best friend is wearing my underwear? I froze. The game froze, Robert had paused it and was looking at me with a soft smile on his amiable face. Maria froze, sitting on the sofa with her hands in her lap. Time froze, the words hanging in the air like steak knives. Are you? He asked. Bluff it out, my brain screamed, deny it all. I was about to speak when Maria spoke for me. Look at Colin's feet. We all looked at my feet. 
There they were on the ends of my legs, encased in nylon stockings. I almost died on the spot. I was caught out. I looked back at Robert and saw him smiling broadly. Cool, he said. I was puzzled at this briefly. Then Maria made things worse for me. She leaned forward and ran her hands over my shoulders and down my back. He's wearing my bra and panties with the suspender belt and seen stockings. Aren't you Colin? For a moment, I looked at her, dumbfounded and silenced by this turn of events. Then I nodded. Aren't you Colin? Maria repeated. This was torture. I was being humiliated. Oh well, better to get it over with. Yes Maria, I said. Maria smiled and sat back. She regarded me with a quiet smile, I wondered what she was up to, something unpleasant no doubt. Robert, shall we introduce Colin to Bobby? She asked. Bobby? What the hell was Bobby? Some sort of torture device? Robert looked up with an impish smile. Christ, he was enjoying this as much as she was. For a brief moment, I hated my two friends, hated them intensely. Can we? He asked. I don't see why not, Maria replied. Robert waited for a moment and then began clearing his games away. When he had finished he stood up. I'll be ready in about half an hour, he said. We'll take a little longer, said Maria. We'll meet Bobby down here okay? Cool. See you in a bit. He left the room and left Maria and I sat in the living room. I sat there shamefaced and humiliated, on the verge of tears. Maria got down on the floor and sat next to me. Then she embraced me. I sat there for a moment, and then I returned her embrace. Oh Colin, don't be upset, I'm not angry at you. You aren't? She broke the embrace and looked at me. Then she stood up. Take my hand, she said, holding her hand out to me. I took it and she gently pulled me to my feet. You're not properly dressed yet girl, let's finish the job. I stood in her bedroom in a daze. I had never been in Maria's bedroom before, though I had seen it through the open door on several occasions. Maria sat on her bedroom table and looked me over. I was still dressed in my male clothes, my battered jeans and faded Metallica t-shirt. Right then, she said, take your clothes off and let's see what you look like. I hesitated for a moment, then pulled my t-shirt off over my head, revealing the bra. I placed the t-shirt on her bed and then I unbuckled the belt on my jeans. I paused for a moment and then pulled the trousers off, revealing the remainder of the lingerie I was wearing. I stood there, embarrassed beyond words, as Maria stood up and walked round me. I stood hunched and miserable with my hands held together in front of me. Maria shook her head. No, that's no good. That's no good at all. Stand up straight and put your arms by your sides, she said. I hesitated for a moment and then I straightened up and put my arms down. Maria looked at me nodding. Oh yeah, that's much better. So Colin, Maria walked up to her wardrobe and pulled the door open, how long have you been dressing up? Air, for the last few years. My voice was barely a whisper. Does your family know? Yeah. They all know. And how do they take it? What was this? Maria was asking the questions as if she were discussing the weather and as she did, she sorted through the clothes in her wardrobe, pulling out items and looking at them then looking at me, what was going on? I decided to go with the flow. Well, my sister is okay with it. She even lends me some of her stuff occasionally. My mom is sort of okay with it, letting me dress up on certain nights but my dad doesn't want to know at all. He ignores me if I'm dressed up. Oh, that's a shame. And what do we call you? I blinked. Sorry? Maria looked up from a silver leather skirt and smiled at me. Your name. We can't call you Colin if you're dressed as a girl. Well, we'll leave it for later. Okay? Okay. Maria went back to looking through her wardrobe and then smiled at me as she pulled a top to go with the skirt. She walked back up to me and held out the skirt. There you go, put that on. I hesitated for a moment. What was going on? Here I was dressed in her lingerie and she was offering me a skirt? Aren't you angry with me? Maria sighed and smiled at me. 
All will be revealed my young little girl, if you get dressed properly. And no, I'm not angry with you. Not angry in the slightest. A little more relaxed now, I took the skirt. It was a silver leather mini skirt. Not short, about mid-thigh, but even so, it would reveal the tops of my stockings if I sat down anywhere. I stepped into it and pulled it up around my waist, buttoning it up at the side. Then I waited as Maria continued pottering around in her wardrobe. She had put the original top back in the wardrobe and was now looking at a t-shirt. She smiled at me. This goes wonderfully with that skirt, she began and then she frowned, oh that won't do. No, that won't do at all, she put the t-shirt on the bed and began rummaging around in one of her drawers. What was going on now? She pulled out two fleshy-looking objects and approached me. She slipped the two pink orbs into the bra and shuffled them about a bit. Then I realized. They were breast forms. I looked at my reflection in the mirror. I had breasts. There you go. That looks better, doesn't it? Thank you, I said. She shrugged. Don't mention it, then she handed me the t-shirt. I slipped it over my head and pulled it down over my torso. The t-shirt was a cold shoulder top with tight sleeves and a baggy effect on the torso. It had Angel picked out on the front in sequins, stretching across my new bust. I looked at my reflection. I looked good. Gone was the effeminate-looking seventeen-year-old, replaced by a young attractive girl. Maria came up behind me and undid my ponytail, letting my long auburn hair dance around my shoulders. Wow, she said slowly, you look good girl. You look pretty damned hot in fact. Thank you, I said again. She smiled at me. Don't thank me yet. We haven't finished. Do you do your own makeup? My brain skidded to a halt at this. I had never worn makeup before ever. Though my sister had offered to show me often enough, I had never been brave enough to try it. I don't wear makeup. I admitted. Maria frowned at me. Oh, come on. Never? No. I shrugged apologetically. Hmm. Well, we'll have to do something about that. First though, shoes. I've got just the pair. You're a size 8 aren't you? I nodded. Great. Same size as me. She dived into another wardrobe and pulled out a pair of silver high heels. Sit down and try these on, she said. I sat on the edge of her bed and stuck my feet into the shoes. My stockinged feet slid into them easily and Maria tightened the straps around my ankles. Then she held out her hands. Here, let me help you up. Taking her hands, I stood up. I was shaky on the heels for a moment and wobbled a little. Maria laughed at this and then, still holding my hands, she stepped back. Take a few steps. Get used to them, she advised. I took a few faltering steps and almost tripped up. Have you got any flat shoes? Yes, but heels go better with those stockings. You need to take smaller steps and try to walk on your toes. Following her advice, I took a few more steps and felt more confident. I was still walking around in a circle, getting used to walking in heels when there was a knock at the door. Are you too weedy yet? I stopped, staring at the door in shock. That was a young girl's voice. Maria sighed and went to the door which she opened a little. No, Bobby. We are not ready yet, she said to the newcomer outside, we've not even given our new friend a name. Oh, okay. I'll be downstairs. Okay. Put something on the Xbox and we'll be down in a bit. A disgusted snort came from the other side of the door. I'm not playing on that. That's for silly boys with no brains. Well, what do you want to play? Monopoly. Maria looked back at me with a smile. Monopoly okay with you? Air, yeah. Yeah, okay. She turned back to look through the door. Okay, Bobby. You go down and set the game up and we'll be down in a few. She paused, looking at me and then grinned. Charlotte and I will be down once we've got our makeup on. Okay? Ugh, makeup. I'm glad I'm only ten. Okay then, but Charlotte gets to be the car, okay? Okay. The sound of skipping feet led away from Maria's door and down the stairs. 
Maria closed the door and leant against it. What did Bobby mean, Charlotte gets to be the car? That was always the token I picked. Charlotte? I asked. That's your femme name. I chose it just now. I just came to me. I thought about it. Looking at the young girl in the mirror, I realized that I did need a female name. I couldn't go around looking like a hot young chick called Colin. I like it. Excellent. You don't mind me choosing it, do you? No, of course not. Air. I like everything you've done for me so far. You've, you've been very understanding. Maria shrugged. That's what big sisters are for. Despite my elation at being dressed, and her acceptance of me in her clothes, her words deflated my bubble a little. She didn't see me as potential boyfriend material. But rather, she saw me as potential little sister material. She drew the chair back from her vanity and gestured towards it. Please, sit down. I walked over and sat before her table. Right, I'll just a basic job on you, since it's daytime and we're not going out anywhere. But it is quite comprehensive. So pay attention. She applied a base coat of foundation to my face and smoothed it out. Then she applied a layer of powder. She worked on my eyes next, just a couple of delicate shades on the lids and then mascara on my lashes. She applied blush to my cheeks along my cheekbones but not too much, a common mistake apparently. Finally she applied lipstick and a slim layer of lip gloss to make them plump out, she told me. Then, she brushed and styled my hair, finally setting her tools down and placing her hands on my shoulders. All the while I had watched in the mirror, as she worked, watching my masculine features turn to an androgynous mask and finally reveal my feminine face. I was astonished that a simple layer of makeup could turn a masculine face into that of a pretty teenage girl. Wow, I said. Wow indeed, Maria said. Let's see the full image, she said. I stood up and walked over to the full-length mirror that was mounted on the door. Of course, I had seen myself dressed up many times, but now, with the makeup and the hair. I look good, I said. Before me was a teenage girl who looked like she ready to sneak into a pub for a drink. I turned sideways and saw a feminine profile in the mirror, I stuck out my right knee, placing my hand on my hip, posing in the heels. I agree, Maria said. Your mannerisms are very good. Very feminine. My sister is a good teacher. So it seems, I'd like to meet her sometime. Her words were a bit muffled, so I turned to see what was wrong. Maria was getting undressed, her denim trousers were on the floor and she was pulling the top over her head. I got a good eyeful, for about half a second. Then I turned away embarrassed, averting my gaze for her modestly. Oh. Don't be shy, she said, tossing her t-shirt onto the bed. We're both girls here. And I've seen you in just your underwear as well. I turned to see her rustling through her wardrobe in just her bra and panties. I blushed under the already softened shade of blusher that I was wearing. I had to admire her logic. Although technically, it was her underwear she had seen me in. She selected a sleeveless blue dress and held it up before her. What do you think? She asked. Yeah, good choice, I said. And this baffled me somewhat. I was offering fashion advice to a genuine girl. She joined me in front of the mirror and posed. Eventually, she set it aside and pulled a garter belt from her drawer along with a pair of black stockings. She quickly put the garter belt and stockings on and then she stepped into the dress and pulled it up around her body. She then turned her back to me. Would you do the honors? For a moment, I just stood there. But then I understood. I reached for the zip and pulled it up, tightening the bodice around her. Thank you, she stepped into a pair of blue high heels. Then she sat at her vanity and redid her makeup. Then she stood up. Okay, Charlotte, let's go and meet Bobby. Oh. Ah. I'd forgotten about Bobby. With some trepidation, I followed Maria downstairs to the living room. What I saw there, I couldn't quite believe. Robert was sat at the dining table, with a Monopoly board set out in front of him. There were three piles of money along three sides of the board and Robert was sat with his head on his forearms playfully knocking the dice about the table with his finger. 
At least, I thought it was Robert. The figure sat there was wearing a pink party dress, with white ruffles. The legs were bare and a pair of plain back shoes with white socks were crossed at the ankles beneath the seat. The blonde hair was tied up in two braids on either side of the head and secured with pink bows. Maria walked into the room and stood before the table. Bobby? The girl sat up. There was no doubt now. The young girl in the pretty pink dress and plain shoes was Robert. I'd like to introduce you to our new friend, Charlotte. Bobby looked up at me and then broke into a wide smile. Oh wow, you look great. For a moment, she giggled and then composed herself. I mean, it's a pleasure to meet you Charwat. And it's good to meet you too. She got out of the chair and walked over to me, throwing her arms around my waist, she gave a hug. Then she stood back returned to the table. Let's play. Now even more than puzzled, I joined Bobby and Maria at the table. Maria looked disappointed. Oh Bobby, you forget the cokes and the snacks. Bobby looked shocked for a moment and then ashamed. I'll be right back. She jumped off her chair and ran into the kitchen. Maria leaned towards me, her voice a conspiratorial whisper. Okay, explanation time. A few years ago, we were invited to a fancy dress party. I wore Robert's clothes and went as a schoolboy and he wore my clothes and went as a schoolgirl. We were in knockout and even won second prize in the best costume awards. Anyway, he liked dressing up and continued dressing up as a girl. He likes to pretend he's a ten-year-old girl. Our mom knows about it and she's okay with it. He keeps saying that he'll grow up as a girl soon, but to be honest, I think he's likes being childish. Bobby came skipping back into the room, his arms full of biscuits, chocolates, crisps, a very large bottle of coke and three glasses. He placed them on the table and then headed for the liquor cabinet where he grabbed a half bottle of vodka. This he gave to Maria after opening the biscuits and the chocolate biscuits, he arranged them on a plate for us all. Maria poured out three generous measures of coke and added a shot of vodka to her own glass. She glanced at me, the neck of the vodka bottle hovering over my coke. I nodded and she added a generous measure of vodka to my glass. Then we began playing Monopoly. For the first half hour, I got used to the fact that both Robert and I were dressed as girls and enjoyed the game. But eventually, I began to wonder about the situation. Yes, Robert and I were dressed, and I knew how Robert had started. But they didn't know why I dressed. I didn't know why they weren't asking about my history, about why I was dressing up as a girl. My puzzlement grew to frustration. I bottled it up for as long as I could. Maybe the vodka had something to do with it. Then after an hour and after Bobby won the final train station in a deal with Maria, my frustration grew to anger. Leotards, I suddenly blurted out. Bobby almost fell from the chair laughing and Maria stared at me wide eyes in surprise. What's that? Bobby asked. A new swear word? Bobby, be quiet, Maria said. She glanced at me. For a moment, we sat there in silence. And I then I started speaking. I started dressing up when I was nine. My sister Kathy, she's three years older than me, she was in the gymnastic squad when she was at school. Anyway, she had these fancy leotards and I was fascinated with them. Eventually, I took one and tried it on. And I liked wearing it. After the leotard, I moved on to her underwear and her other clothes. She confronted me about it, and I admitted it. Then I had to admit to my parents. My dad said he would accept it, but that he didn't like it or want anything to do with it. He's not angry about it but he doesn't like it either. My mom was okay, buying me my own clothes and letting me dress up. My sister said that she was upset about it at first, but that like she liked idea of having a little sister. There are three rules. I'm not to tell anyone, I'm not to go out, and I can't their clothes without asking them if I can borrow them. I sighed and sat there, with my head down. For some reasons, I was on the verge of tears. I know it's not normal, I continued, I know it's not right, but I can't help myself. For a moment, there was a long awkward silence. Bobby got up from chair and came to my side. Placing her arms around me, she held me close for a moment. 
Then she wrestled a chair to my side and sat in it. Maria scooted round to my side. She reached out and took my hand. Look at me, Charlotte. I raised my head and saw her smiling gently. She raised my hand and kissed it gently, before lowering it to my lap. You're not wrong, wanting to dress up as a girl. It's quite common, actually. Look at Bobby. I looked at my friend, sat there in her plan Mary Jane shoes and pink dress, looking every inch the ten-year-old girl, she clearly wasn't. She waved at me. Hello. I smiled and turned back to Maria. There's nothing wrong in expressing your femininity. As for not being normal. Charlotte, I say this as your friend. You're so normal, you're positively square. I looked at her open-mouthed for a moment. And then I burst out laughing. As I laughed, my laughter seemed contagious. Maria giggled for a moment, then giggling turned to chuckling, soon she was laughing out loud too. Bobby was already on the verge of falling out of her chair. Laughing so hard, she seemed to be having trouble breathing. Eventually, the laughter subsided. And with it, my anxiety, my guilt, my shame, all of it excised, like poison drawn from a wound. Eventually, the laughter subsided and the tense atmosphere that had existed before my outburst was wiped from the slate. Bobby had managed to make it back to her seat. Can we get back to the game, please? We returned to our Monopoly game after a brief argument as to whose turn it was. I felt calm. And even more surprisingly, I felt accepted. So of course, it couldn't last. Afternoon, everyone. I've decided to, oh. Fiona Garrett, Maria and Bobby's mother was stood in the living room doorway as we set up the board for another game. I had won and though Bobby had thrown a few tantrums, it was play acting and Maria and I had played along with her. For a moment, I just sat there. I had always that the expression, a deer frozen in the headlights, was simply that, an expression. I was now experiencing it as a genuine emotion. Bobby showed no such qualms. Mommy! She jumped off the table, yes she had actually sat on it, and ran in her socks towards her mother, skidded to a half before her and throwing her arms around her waist. Hey, Bobby, she said, stroking the long blonde hair, then her expression turned stern, what have I told you about sitting on the table? Not too. That's right. Go in the kitchen, dear, make me a cup of coffee, please. Bobby ran from the room and was clumping and clanging about in the kitchen. Fiona came over to the table and sat at it. So, what's your name, dear? She asked me. Air. Mom, this Charlotte. Fiona's stern mouth widened into a broad welcoming smile. Charlotte. It's a pleasure to meet you. Now, Maria, can you explain how this happened? Maria glanced at me for a moment and then sighed. We caught Colin trying on my lingerie. He admitted to us that he was a cross-dresser, so we decided to help him. I did his makeover and then introduced him to Bobby. And we've been playing Monopoly ever since. I see. And what's more, she then smiled warmly, I approve. She relaxed and placed her arms on the table. I take it your parents know and approve of this? She waved her hand at my outfit. Erm. My sister does. She helps with my outfits and even some of her old clothes. My mom's okay with it, provided I didn't tell anyone about it, but my dad doesn't like it at all. Then your father, if you'll pardon me, is being foolish. There is nothing wrong or unnatural about a man wanting to dress as a woman. Or a woman wanting to dress as a man for that matter, she glanced at Maria for a moment and then clapped her hands together. So, Charlotte, you're welcome to join us at any time. And you know Colin is always welcome as well, she glanced at the kitchen, I know Bobby would appreciate the company of a like-minded individual such as yourself. In fact, perhaps you could talk Bobby into growing up. Dressing as a girl your own age is one thing. Dressing as a girl younger than your age is quite another. Bobby came back with four mugs of coffee instead of just one for his mother, but we were all welcome of liquid refreshment. We adjourned to the living room where Bobby and I filled in the blanks to both our stories. It seemed that as Robert grew up, Bobby, his femme alter ego did not. 
and along with my fascination with leotards, my sister had taught me gymnastic moves to keep me limber and maintain my figure. And of course, my bike riding helped with that as well. Then I noticed the time. It was mid-morning when I arrived and it was now early evening. I had to be at home that evening because my parents were away for the weekend and my sister was spending the night with her boyfriend. They had asked me to look after the house, and I had left it unoccupied for too long already. I have to go I'm afraid. Oh, but, you'll be back soon right? Bobby asked and I smiled. Of course I will. And how will you be getting home? I can give you a lift if you want? Fiona asked. I glanced out of the window. The downpour had stopped and the sun was out. It would be a pleasant walk in the early evening. No, it's okay. I'll walk. I'll be fine. You'll need to get changed of course, Mrs. Garrett said. I looked down at the clothes I was wearing. Of course. Maria stood up. Come with me, I'll help you take your makeup off. Taking my hand she led me back up to her room. When she reached her bedroom, she unzipped the blue dress and stepped out of it. Do you really want to get changed? I turned to look at my reflection. I wasn't supposed to go out dressed, but I didn't want to get changed either. And with my parents away for the weekend, they would never know. I turned to Maria and shook my head. No, I don't, I said, and then I sighed, but I have to. Well, you certainly need to change. She dove into her closet and produced a silver dress, handing it to me. Out of that that skirt and top then. And slip this on. She snatched up my jeans and t-shirt and headed to the bathroom. Where's you underwear? In the washing basket, I replied. Okay. See you soon. I stood there for a moment, a little bewildered. Then, I eventually slipped out of the skirt and the top. I reached for the dress. It was a stretchy material and I pulled it on over my head, pulling it down around my body until it hung on me as if tailor-made. It clung to my body and I admired myself in the mirror. When Maria came back, I had something of a massive shock. Maria? She grinned mischievously. Call me Mark. She was wearing my clothes. She was shrugging her way into my jacket. The battered jeans hung on her hips, totally obliterating her curves and the faded Metallica t-shirt hit her breasts. Her hair, short and black, was in a masculine cut and she was free of a makeup. She looked like a young teenage man. And damn, she was still attractive. Are you ready? Air. Put this on, a denim jacket was handed to me. I pulled it on. She then grabbed a handbag and tipped it out on the bed. She then shoveled my possessions into her handbag. My keys, my mobile phone and my cash, which she put into a small purse. Then she put her stuff into the pockets on my clothes. Right then. Let's go. We left her room and made our way down the stairs. Maria went first, looking out for her mom, but Mrs. Garrett was in the kitchen. Mom, she called out, I'm going to walk Colin home okay? Okay dear. Call me when you get there. Bobby was sat in front of the TV watching a cartoon. She saw and sat bolt upright, her mouth gaping, her finger pointed at us in an accusing fashion. Maria put a finger to her lips and Bobby nodded, sitting back, remaining silent. He has gotten changed hasn't he? Mark smiled back at me. Oh yeah, he's gotten changed. A snort had me shooting a glance at Bobby, who was doubled up on the sofa, trying to contain her laughter. We left the house and walked down the drive. I was a little hesitant at first, but I had a source of confidence at my side, in Maria, or Mark as she was asking me to call. Then something struck. Are you wearing my underwear? I asked her. Yeah, her grayish-blue eyes twinkled with mischief. Hey, fair's fair. You're wearing my mine after all. My confidence grew as we walked through the streets. It was the first time I had been out dressed as a girl and with Maria, or Mark as she was calling herself, at my side, I felt that the people who saw us would simply assume that we were what we appeared to be. A young man with his younger girlfriend taking a walk on a lovely summer's day. Though it was still hot, the downpour had cooled the day down. So when Mark suggested that we take a detour through the park, I did not disagree. 
Upon entering the part, he took my hand in his. For a few minutes I felt like I was floating and there were more people who could see, I suddenly didn't care. After a few hundred yards, we found a park bench. I could not help but giggle as we sat down, me sweeping my dress beneath my bottom and crossing my legs in Mark, just plopping down, his legs wide. We chatted about nonsense for a while and then Mark grew pensive. I have a confession to make, he said. Oh, it's not just Robert that dresses up. I like to dress as a man occasionally. I mean, if I was wearing makeup, no one would think any the less of me. But if you were to be red, then you could face ridicule and even hatred. It's just bloody unfair that we can't be who we are. I couldn't help but agree. But I stayed silent as Mark seemed gearing up to continue. Anyway, that's not the confession. I laid the lingerie out on the banisters before you arrived. I was hoping you'd want to try it on so when you went to the toilet. So when you went to the toilet, I followed you up. When I saw the lingerie had gone, I knew you were in the bathroom. And when you came out, I saw your feet and knew you were wearing it. He smiled at me. I was glad you tried it on. Wait, you, you tricked me? Let me carry on. You see, it was me who suggested that Robert and I change clothes for the fancy dress party all those years ago. I didn't think that Robert would go for it, but when he did, and when Bobby appeared, I was happy. Anyway, since then I've had a thing for men who dress up as women. I guess I'm attracted to cross-dressers. So I'm glad when you appeared as Charlotte. I gulped, I could hardly believe what I was hearing. So, does that mean? I want to be Colin's girlfriend. And that means I get to Charlotte's boyfriend as well. So if you think I've tricked you, I'm really sorry. I'm glad you tricked me, I said, I've loved you forever Maria. And if you want to be my girlfriend, I'd love to be your boyfriend. And speaking as Charlotte, I'd be honored if I were Mark's girlfriend. Mark appeared to be on the verge of tears. Then he smiled and choked them back. He put his arm around my shoulders and his hand on my knee. I'm going to kiss you now, he said. I'm going to let you, I replied. We were married two years later. We had found a cheap flat to rent that would do until we could afford to buy a house. By then I had a job as a marketing consultant and she had been promoted to a supervisory role in the department where she had started as summer temp. We weren't rich, but we weren't struggling either. We had two ceremonies. A public one, where I wore the suit and she wore the wedding dress. Our friends and families attended and Robert was my best man. Then we had a private one. Only close family attended the blessing. This time it was Mark who wore the suit as I, escorted down the aisle by my father, wore the wedding dress. With Bobby as my chief bridesmaid. We spent two weeks away on our honeymoon. Maria and I spent the first week in the pretty coastal town of Marseille in France, soaking up the Mediterranean sun. Charlotte and Mark spent the next week in the Belgian town of Bruges, soaking up the history and culture. When we returned home, we continued to be two couples. Mark and Charlotte and Maria and Colin. And to think, it all started with a handful of lingerie placed on a banister.